It's Friday night, and here we are in Kitsch.com, the food network for a new generation. And it is prime time, 7 p.m. Late for us, huh? And when I say us, I am joined, as always, by the mystical and magical Kansas City Jen, monitoring the chat and all incoming uh, communications from whatever world they may be on. I heard, I saw today there was a story about a radio signal received from millions of light years away. So Jen is here to pick up said signal. That's a lot of pressure. I Well, you know, with great <laughs> roles come great responsibility. Uh, I hope everyone's having a fabulous uh, kickoff to their weekend here. We're excited because uh, tonight we're making tropical shrimp, but we're also excited because our Kansas City Chiefs are playing Sunday night. Speaking yeah, of prime time, go uh, Chiefs for the championship game. So tomorrow and Sunday, we've got a couple uh, game day type of recipes that we're going to be doing live here on Kitsch.com. But tonight, it's all about the scrimps and how delicious they are. Uh, if you've never seen us before, I am Montana Max, and you are watching Montana Max Barbecue TV, and my dogs have decided it's full on playtime. So if you hear a little jingling jangling over here that's what's <laughs> going on so let's go ahead if this is your first time here and give you a quick run through quick tour of the kitchen you're watching the main feed here and you can see we've got an awesome overhead camera ready to rock and roll and we're going to be doing some stovetop cooking so we can keep you apprised of that also in the bottom corner there i have also remembered to hit the twitter notification uh to let everyone in the twitterverse know that we are live as well and if you're saying to yourself, Montana Max, oh, and that's what happens when you have dogs playing on the cord. Uh-oh. They are <laughs> they're turning the camera off and on. Uh, if you're saying to yourself, Montana Max, I can't, I'm on my cellular device here. I cannot see exactly. And you, there goes flying toys. <laughs> dangerous, dangerous. There we go. Uh, uh, trying to keep I them need off a better view of what we're doing. This is, this is what happens when you're a live streamer, you know, kitsch.com. Yeah, we're live. True. Uh, there is no dress rehearsal. There is no editing. We do not have a team of people ready to apply my makeup. I do all this myself. Uh, so things like that can happen on occasion as we're coming to you live from the Ozark Mountains. Here we go. Speaking of the Ozark Mountains, we finally solved our internet connectivity issues. That was a year long process getting mountain to the internet. We've got our bird's eye view here manageable for you so you can make sure to see a full view of what we're doing here. Also, we can give you a side angle. That's right. We've got the mystery blender out here because we're going to be making a fantastic sauce as well. Now it's a little dark outside, but we do do outdoor cooking. And you can see a few of our devices there. Uh, and the sign out there is open tonight because we've got some favorable weather. So that's been great. Uh, my gosh, these dogs are just all sorts. It's the fresh <laughs> all air. They're sort of wound up right now. They're wound up. And then we can, of course, give you that angle on the stove as well. More fun and surprises to come is we are going to be uh, live all month here on Kitsch doing fun recipes for you all. And they have frozen the camera. Oh, so puppies. Give puppies. me one second here. There we go. We should be good. We should be good. And we are. Oh All my right. goodness. There we go. <laughs> Let's get into making some tropical shrimp here while these little fur balls are running amok tonight. They've been sleeping all day and all, just decide no. to do this. And our show's right all, all week. <laughs> They've just been been lumps on a bump on a stump on the bottom of the sea, not not a peep or anything. And they're just like, you know what? Friday night, let's party. So I guess so. Thank you for bearing with us. Now, remember, uh, now here we have live chat. Uh, so your chat's coming up live. We've got that monitor over there. Say hello, get to know us. We love making friends. Food brings us all together. And if you're really ready to go and you want to get your smiling face here, out, hey, just like Kansas City Jen, there she is coming from all the way across the room. Hello. Uh, <laughs> you can join us on the chef's table and we can hear your audio and you can ask questions and hang out and have a good time there as well. All right. I have gone ahead and I have prepped some rice for our dish ahead of time. We cooked it in chicken stock to give it that extra flavor and that's all ready to go. Uh, just remember, general rule of thumb when it comes to rice is one cup of rice to two cups of liquid. 
And if you're using water, make sure you give it the salt treatment, right? A little salt goes a long way in that flavor. But we're a big fan of using uh, chicken stock. You can use beef stock, really it, a veggie stock. Tomato juice. Tomato juice. We've done that. Mm -hmm. You could actually add some coconut milk uh, oh, yeah. for that recipe. I just didn't open up the can. I wanted that to be a fresh experience for mm -hmm. everyone here this evening. And there we go. So we might as well hop into it here. I'm hungry. Jen is always hungry. And one other note about the chef's table. Yeah. You can always join without video. Um, and you could also join without uh, uh, without using your microphone. But that is one thing. If you do want to say anything, you have a question, you can do that. There you go. And then I go, Jen, you've got a question? Yeah, I like that. And Super you can easy. raise your hand. That's a nice, fun feature. Of course, there's emojis and all yeah. kinds of stuff. And I but can it's... disappear too. There, and then, and she's gone like the wind. <laughs> all right, let's hop into it here uh, and get some stuff ready to go in the fridge. Just chilling away. I've got some beautiful jumbo shrimp right here. We're gonna set those over to this. Well, let's give you a quick. There we go. Got a pound, pound of shrimp here. Uh, jumbo size. It doesn't really matter what size you use. I prefer using jumbo shrimp when I cook shrimp most of the time because they're large and in charge. But besides that, the larger they are, the more grace you're going to have cooking them. Shrimp is one of those proteins, everyone's favorite. Jen would eat shrimp every meal of every day if you let her. And then we'd say goodbye to Jen due to mercury poisoning and trophic levels. <laughs> but uh, smaller shrimp cook much more quickly and you run the risk of overcooking it. With this type of recipe, we're going to get some beautiful sauce going. That's what our main thing is going to be here. So let's go ahead. I've got some tools of construction. Uh, we're going to need a grater. We're going to need a can opener. I've got a peeler in front of us here. We've got some cilantro. We've got some beautiful, this is beautiful ginger root right here that we're going to be using. A couple limes. Uh, coconut milk here. Always, 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 always. Full fat coconut milk. Don't get the light stuff. You might as well just use water then. Uh, we got the full uh, full fat coconut milk there. The real deal, Holyfield. Soy sauce, sriracha. I've been babying the sriracha. We're down to our last little bit of sriracha here that we've got rocking and rolling. And uh, of course, some honey. And we're going to put a spin on this because uh, right here in this tiny little bear, uh, this is actually, let's go ahead and flip it over and I'll hold it up to the camera. Not that one. Let's do that one. Look at this tiny little bear right there. So this is a local uh, infused honey company. They do all sorts of infusions. We're going to add a little flavor here with some jalapeno uh, infused honey. And I'm going to need a little bit extra. So I've got some uh, run amok hibiscus mm -hmm. flower honey here. That's so we're going to really combine those two uh, to get the sweet factor uh, with a lot of Asian cuisine. Right, a lot of Asian cuisine uh, in the umami factor and all those. Good. Be back. There we go. All, all right. right. Thank you for your patience. Here we go. We'll have to edit that one down Yay. for the YouTuber version. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much for your patience. Let's jump into the cooking. Let's get things going here. And we are going to start right away uh, getting our sauce together. Okay. Let's go ahead. We're going to be using a blender, any sort of food processor for this. It's not an exorbitant amount of sauce. We're going to use this to help cook our shrimp. Uh, as we go, but let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and open up our coconut milk. That was some nice banter there, Kansas City, Jen. You did well. Well, thank you. Got to keep, got to keep her going. <laughs> this is just Friday night. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong, right? All right. So let's go ahead. I'm going to break out a measuring cup here. And I've got, uh, we've got a lot of liquids that are going to be going into this sauce. So I've got notes to the side here that we're going to be using. Let me flip this back over. That's the one thing I didn't do, so I can't see that. That's all right. There we go. Bam. I'm living. Living it. All right. Totally throws you off your game. All right. What are we going to need here? We're going to need uh, about a quarter cup of coconut milk. And what I was going to say, what I was going to say, I have thoughts. They're in my head is coconut milk can oftentimes separate. I shook this can up really good, but I'm going to go ahead and stick a fork in it here. And Luna, <laughs> just leave her. Yeah, she's good. Just leave her right there. Uh it'll oftentimes separate and then you'll pour out water and then it'll be liquid, especially if it's been sitting on the shelf for a long time. You can always find this in uh, the 
you know, international food uh, area of your grocery store. So about a quarter cup here. Uh, typically when I'm making a sauce like this at home and I'm not doing the instruction type of thing, I'll just pour, right? And taste as I go and pour. And it drives Jen nuts. Jen's a measurer. I am not, but that's all right. It takes both kinds in this world, right? So about a quarter cup of this that we're going to go in. I'll keep a little bit over there and we'll kind of get an idea where we're at, all right? And a little bit less than a quarter cup of lime juice that we're going to be using in there. So let's go ahead, pop open a uh, beautiful lime here. There we go. And we're going to be using our squeezy tool. If you do not have one of these, I know you've seen them. They've always got them in the grocery store, your favorite home goods store and things like that. Uh, highly recommend picking one of these up. The reason being, if you squeeze a lime, all right, if you squeeze a lime, and this lime is a big old lime, so I'm actually going to use the lemon compartment for it. Uh, if you squeeze a lime or a lemon with your hands, your hands are just not strong enough to get all the juice out of uh, citrus fruit, okay? Uh, so this allows you to get that pressure to really get the yield. And with the prices of groceries and things going up, we really want to make sure that we're getting uh, full effectiveness Look at that. Look at all that beautiful. Now, if we're just doing that with our hand, the other great thing, if you're doing lemons, right? If you're doing lemons in there, ah, if you're doing lemons in there, it's also going to catch the seeds and we don't want those seeds in there. So we're going to squeeze the juice from about one lime here. Let's go ahead and get that other one in there. Beautiful, bright citrus. Mm, loves it. All right. So we've got that rocking and rolling here. And then we are going to get our ginger root. Now we don't need all of this ginger root but I am gonna keep uh, keep it together here. And just with a peeler right here, standard vegetable peeler, uh, and we are composting, so this can actually go right into the compost bin over here. You can still see me? Yep, I haven't uh, completely disappeared. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, peel. We're gonna need about a half of a tablespoon, so that's gonna be about a chunk here. And we're going to just use that so we can keep our fingers out of the way. Now that we've got that peeled fairly well, we want to make sure to get all that off. Then we'll come back in with our knife, remove that. There is just nothing like a fresh ginger. You know, you can so use it. good for you, too. It's very good for you. Uh, it's just, you know, and we've used the stuff in the jars, you know, you know right next to the garlic. They've always got the pre-minced ginger. Uh, it's just not as potent. It's just not as fragrant. You know, it's a nice little investment in you when you buy fresh. I'm going to just come over the top here. And you can slice this off too. That's probably what I'll do here to finish this off. Uh, just to keep my fingers out of the way. There we go. We'll just go ahead. Finish that off. Not too shabby. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna break this down a little bit here. You can sit, you can take your uh, grater, you can mince it out. We're throwing it in a blender, so we don't really need to do that, but we don't want chunks of it. So we wanna break it down just a little bit, get that off the no, blade. The ginger is so strong. You definitely don't want chunks, but I really like the fresh ginger that you use rather than the, you know, you can get the minced ginger like in the jars which would save, I guess, a little time, but there is definitely a taste difference, don't you think? Oh, 100%, 100%. And if you do use the jar stuff, no one's judging you when you're cooking at home, right? Uh, just remember this, just remember this, that you're gonna need to use a little bit more. So we're using a half tablespoon here. If I'm using the jarred stuff, I'd get closer to a tablespoon of it, uh, just because it's not as potent, okay? So we're gonna go ahead, take our Nakiri knife here, which is our, Asian vegetable cleaver, and we're just gonna work that down here. It's going to break down the rest of it in the blender. We're just gonna help it out a little bit. All right, we got that going. Now, let's refer to our notes here and get these measurements uh, that I got uh, half a tablespoon, half a tablespoon, half a tablespoon. Love it when I keep it simple, <laughs> right? Uh, so we're gonna do about a half a tablespoon of soy sauce, and I've got like the coolest uh, measuring spoon in the world, I did in your jar in the drawer of doom right there <laughs> in the in the drawer of doom yes that's this is where all all we live in a tiny home and this is where every single one of our kitchen utensils lives 
I don't see it. Do you want me to help? Oh, I found it. It was it. <laughs> there. It is. There we go. Uh, remember, if you're if you're watching us here, we got recipes and other content on all of our social media. And if you give us a follow on Facebook, our YouTube channel, uh, or our Twitch channel, you'll actually change the color of the lights in the kitchen while That's we're live. That's right. We had that happen yesterday. Somebody gave us a follow on our Twitch, and it scared the living tar out of me. So yeah. lots of other fun content available on those. And you can actually see uh, one of our shorts that's on uh, Instagram and YouTube and stuff uh, where I'm rifling through the door of the doom. The door of doom, <laughs> yes. You can. All right. So uh, half tablespoon here going in the blender. So this is going to make a really nice sauce. Yep. That's the plan. And then we're going to use our sriracha. Now, sriracha is a great, uh, great Asian hot sauce because it's not overly spicy, right? It's not going to burn your palate off. It just adds a little kick to it, a little body. So we've got that salty with the soy. We got a little heat uh, and savory with that sriracha going in there. And now we are going to add our honey, okay? Oh, the best part. And we've got our creamy. So that's the beautiful thing about Asian sauces, right? Uh, it's it's grabbing all these components, salty, sweet, savory, creamy, all these different things coming together uh, to really set your palate ablaze. All right, so we got the jalapeno in honey here. Yes, yes. Yeah. And this actually doesn't have much heat to it. It's got the flavor of jalapenos, uh -huh. but it doesn't have I, uh, I so much of the heat. handle it, yes, yes, yes. I made Jen test it. I, I really like spicy things. Uh, Jen, on the other hand, is not as big a fan of... Uh, Spice. The heat. The heat, <laughs> per se. Spice is different than heat, right? We we, we use that word uh, interchangeably, but they mean such different things when they're used, you know, mm -hmm. correctly. Spice and heat, you know, we say that. it's spice, it's spice. It's not spice, it's heat, right? It's a different, uh, you know, oftentimes capsaicin that's lighting us up, which isn't, isn't spice. It's a whole different chemical ingredient that brings heat to our palate, to our taste buds, right? So we often use those words interchangeably and, you know, we really shouldn't. We really shouldn't. All right. So we got most of that out of there. Come on, bear. For those of you, uh, if you're new joining us uh, here just the last few minutes, if you'd like to join us on the chef's table, you certainly can. That's Bam! Where, chef's table. That's where. Bam! Say hi, chat. I am. <laughs> hi. There she is. There's Jen. <laughs> And you can join without video if you want, just like I had mine up without video. Um, but this is a good way for you to ask questions. If you have any, you can just raise your hand like that. <laughs> it's that easy. It's that easy. So we need about a quarter cup of honey. That had two ounces in the bear. Uh, so I'm going to add in uh, just about another uh, ounce here. Ooh, and that honey is super rich, and I love that honey. There we go. You okay. see the color difference. Yes, very, very stark difference there. Very stark difference. Do you want to lick the spoon? I'll save that for you. Definitely. Maybe put that in some tea. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. So we've got pretty much all of our liquid ingredients in there. Uh, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some fresh cilantro. We really pride ourselves on trying to have highly customizable recipes, right? So that's the big thing, cilantro. Some people, it tastes like so. Maybe it does to you. If it does, uh, you can do some, you know, flat leaf parsley or something like that mm -hmm. to get get a little bit in there. But uh, if you're a cilantro fan, highly, highly uh, suggest adding that in. We're going to take those stems and put that in our compost bin here, and just just helping the blender out. You don't even really need to do it. I just wanted to get those stems out of there, and it's just habit. Uh, and we are going to go ahead in a fair amount. Uh, we're going to drop in there. And if stems are edible in this, that's totally fine. We're going to keep a little of that for some lovely garnish. We're going to add that to our rice as well. And let's pop on the lid. I think I got everything. A lot of ingredients here in this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ingredients in this sauce. Okay, seven different ingredients. You just got a little sticky on the honey there. Let's get some heat on the pan back on the stove and let's pop this on. Pop this on the blender. And I always do this incorrectly. There we go. Let's see if that works. Power. All right. Let's go ahead uh, and watch your ears here. If your volume's up and you're like, yeah, uh, watch out here because it's going to probably be a little bit loud.
There we go. We're blending away there. You can see the bottom of that blender doing its business. Make sure we get all that ginger, right? And Marianne, too, and the skipper and Gilligan all blended together really nicely in our sauce. All right. That, that probably did it. So once again, we apologize uh, for your ears there, but so, some things must be done in the name of flavor. So that's it. That's real simple for the sauce here. Let's go ahead. We got our pan back there. We're going to get a knob of butter here. Uh, which is basically like a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. I just, you know, we've made so many friends through cooking and our live shows all over the world. And I've adapted that uh, from our friends from the UK. I'm going to throw in a knob of butter, right? A knob of butter. Uh, you want a decent little hunk here, a couple tablespoons. Get that in back there. Let's flip that over. And I've got butter fingers quite literally right now. Uh, and we're going to get that melted down here, all right? Now... It just wouldn't be Montana Max Barbecue TV if I didn't plug a Montana Max Barbecue product along the way. <laughs> Got to do it, babe. Which one? Well, of course, Which we are going to season our shrimp here with our letter buck. Okay, our letter buck seasoning here. Uh, it's a, it's you know, it's labeled as a barbecue rub and seasoning, but it's such a great all-purpose. It's great on uh, chops and all kinds of stuff. Uh, chops, burgers, barbecue. Seafood, it's got kind of a Carolina. Vegetables. Uh, tang to it, right? Mm -hmm. So it really livens up. We use it on seafood all the time, especially shrimp, salmon, all that good stuff, because uh, it really pairs well with a sweet component. Uh, and then you got that savory. So we got our shrimp in here. Uh, I'm going to just pour off real quickly. There's a little bit of excess water, which we don't need. So let's just go ahead and drain that off down into the sink real quickly here and come back over and, well, our knob of butter melts. We use a lot of barbecue seasonings uh, in in cooking because it's such an easy way versus grab this, grab that, grab this. A lot of that's in your uh, standard barbecue seasoning. Uh, and it adds a little flair, right? It adds a little flair to what you're cooking. Let's go ahead. Uh, clean hand there. Over the top. And you can see, you know, you can get a little heavy handed with it, uh, especially if you're like ours. Salt isn't like... There's salt in it, but it's not the main flavor, right? So you just want to be careful. Know what you're cooking with uh, and make sure, you know, we don't over salt or anything. Salt can always be added. Uh, we're adding flavor here and we just want a nice light coating. It should be aromatic there. That is smelling absolutely wonderful. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, tails have been removed. You can cook these in the shell, but you do need to remove the shells after cooking, right? So we're making it easy on a Friday night here. Sauce, seven ingredients, all into the blender, ready to go, okay? Very excited for this meal. Well, this is where it gets super easy. We got our shrimp, we seasoned them up with our barbecue seasoning, mm -hmm. seven ingredients, basically dump those in the blender uh, and stuff that we, you know, we've got around the house. You know, most of us have a bottle mm -hmm. of sriracha. Most of us have a bottle of soy sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, so cilantro is very cheap. Ginger is not expensive and you can buy just a little tiny bit of fresh ginger. It's by weight typically at the grocery store. So if you want just a little, I uh, just need a little bit, get a little tiny one, cost mm -hmm. you almost nothing. So very affordable uh, dish all around too. Most of us have some honey. You don't have to use a jalapeno infused honey. You can use your standard honey, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to add a little flair, there's smoked honeys and all different types of infused honeys. It's a real hip thing. And that's me. You know, I know you're sitting there right now and you're like, man, that Montana Max, he's awfully hip and with it. I know, right? Uh, so we, we're, we're doing the hip and with it thing and we've got that uh, jalapeno infused honey into our sauce there as well. And, uh, but standard honey works just fine. We've got our butter working down there, medium heat. Let's flip it over to the stove cam here. What do you know? That one's working. We're doing all right. All right, and we've got our beautiful shrimp here, and we're going to go ahead and start cooking these in the butter. Start that cooking process, all right? Bowl goes in the sink. Let's get ourselves a lovely wooden spoon and spread these bad boys out. You can see, see the amount of color. You know, we're not applying barbecue seasoning like you would a rub if you were doing ribs or pork shoulder or any of those types of dishes, right? Uh, just enough. Just enough. Give it a little season. 
We want to make sure to get that excess water out too because uh, shrimp contain a lot of water in them. And when we start cooking them, uh, you're going to see that. Plus, we're going to be adding our sauce, which we don't want to dilute, okay, too much. There's going to be inherently some water that comes out of the pan uh, as we start cooking these shrimp. Now, shrimp, as we talked about, it's been a theme kind of all week. I've talked on this point uh, quite a bit if you've been here with us all week, right? Uh, overcooking, overcooking, overcooking is such the killer for most people and inexperienced chefs in the kitchen, right? You overcook shrimp, they can become rubbery, all right? Same thing, chicken, it dries out and gets stringy and then you have a bad experience. Uh, so that's the one thing that we really want to be careful of. And like I said, larger shrimp are going to give you a little bit more uh, grace period here as far as overcooking them, okay? Little ones, cook faster. Uh, internal temperature of seafood. I'm going to clean that up real quickly while we're, while we're chatting away and waiting for our pan to heat up here a little bit more. Uh, that butter's melting down, but we're going to get that going and get a little bit of a saute going on those shrimp. Uh, what was I going to say? I had a whole point and then I'm like, <laughs> and then you just went off <laughs> and I just went off. Um, oh, internal temperature of seafood pretty much across the board. That's where I was going with that is 145 degrees, right? If you've got a good thermometer, you can do that. But the easiest way to check seafood is as soon as it becomes opaque through the center, it's cooked all the way through. All right. And sometimes when you're dealing with seafood, larger cuts, salmon, uh, in that type of seafood, it's very easy to probe it. When it comes sometimes to smaller shrimp and things like that, it can be difficult to get that probe in there just right and get an accurate reading. Because when you're using you're using a thermometer, and these jumbo shrimp are uh, pretty easy to do, but when you're using a thermometer, let's talk about that while we're waiting here. We're just hanging out on a Friday night, having a good time, talking about internal meat temperatures. Uh, when we are using a thermometer, and this is the number one tool I always tell people in our classes and everything, I'm like, you want to be a better chef? Get one of these. We use uh, the ThermoPro ones here. Uh, accurate within one second, right? And they're all scientifically done. Super nice. This is what all the pro barbecue guys do. But you're only getting the tip here, all right? You jam this thing in, even up to here. That's not where it's reading temperature. It's only reading temperature at the tip, and we want the tip of this in the center of our protein, okay? And if we get that, and this is our protein, and we put that through, and the tip will then start reading the bottom of the pan. You'll be like, holy Jesus, <laughs> my temperature is 400 million degrees. It's not. It's not. That's the metal in the pan. You went too far. You went too far. So you just want to get that tip in the center. And that can be a difficult thing with small seafood that you've got uh, cooking, cooking around there. So you want to be careful of that, right? And there's other things that can give you false reading too. Not with seafood, but with larger meats and stuff like pork shoulders, right? With barbecue, you get a fat pocket that's rendered down. That fat's going to be at a higher temperature actually than the muscle will be. So you got to just know a few basic things about getting get in your protein uh, reads right. All right, we're doing good. How much good. does a thermometer like that cost? How, who's asking you? Me, yeah. Oh, uh, so basically retail price on those is about like $89. Uh, Thermo works, mm -hmm. run sales on them like all the time. Though. Oh. So you can usually get like 15, 20% off. Mm -hmm. it, it, they're great company for that. They're always running deals and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they actually, Speaking of this, if you're watching this right now, and what's today's date? The 26th, 27. right? 27. 27, 2023. So if you're watching this YouTube, if this is up on YouTube like five years later and you're like, Montana Max said this, this is the date. It's good right now. But they're actually, uh, they have a version called Thermo Pop, okay? And it looks like a lollipop with a round top. Oh. And uh, they are the same accuracy it just doesn't read as quickly like it's like three seconds i know right who's got that kind of time to wait but uh they're doing a big like special color sale on those like right now where they're like they're cheap anyways they're cheaper they're like 24.99 i think they've got them on sale for less than 20 bucks so for your typical wow. at home I, yeah it's like a super good deal because i was like oh maybe it's i'll just buy as it accurate is it just, just as accurate just not as quick and I, wow. th like this one lights up at night, the screen does and stuff. 
So okay. there's a few of those extra bells and whistles, but just as accurate, just a little bit slower read time for your most, for most of your at home cooks. I mean, it'll do the job for you really well. So anyways, I'd highly suggest checking those out, especially right now they got that sale going on. Mm -hmm. If you missed the sale, you're watching this video later on demand. They're still cheap, <laughs> but they're not cheaply made. They're just no. really for the price for your bang for buck. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Okay. And I'm not endorsed by them or anything. I wish I was because yeah. I'm, I'm really giving them the spiel today. You know, I'm, I'm influencing. Look at me, Jed. I'm an influencer. Oh, my God. <laughs> Next up, wood spoons. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and flip it back over to the stove. All right, we're starting to get some color there. That's what we're looking for. Pan's hot. Butter's in there. Woohoo! It's starting to smell delicious. So we've got our letterbox seasoning available on MontanaMaxBBQ.com on our website, along with recipes and everything else. We've got some color. We're doing good now. All right. Hot pan, that's going to take you about, uh, uh, we were coming up to temperature, so it took a little longer. If you're cooking medium high heat and that pan's hot and you put them in there, be real careful because they're going to cook in about a minute's time. We're chatting, doing stuff, and we were waiting for that to come up to temperature. Uh, so we had a little bit more grace there. All right. How's the color look? glorious yeah yeah it does uh i'm coming with the sauce don't worry i haven't i haven't abandoned you all screen's not frozen here we go and now we're just gonna pour this beautiful sauce right in there all the, oh careful sharp there we go it's i'm telling you this the show tonight is haunted that is just just the way it is. It's just like, hey, my blender's gonna fall apart. Cameras are malfunctioning. <laughs> I am really surprised I haven't lost a finger yet tonight. Don't, uh, don't if, say those things out loud. Right? If you're if you're just joining us, uh, thank you for joining us here on Kitch.com, Food Network for a New Generation. If you've been with us here the entire ride, thank you uh, very much for sticking around and having some fun with us on a Friday night. All right, so we've got that sauce in there, and that's what we're going to use to finish cooking out our shrimp here. So let's make sure we've got a good stir going on. And that's some beautiful color. We got that cilantro, and we got a little butter in there now. We've got our honey and soy sauce and Coconut sriracha. Milk. Coconut milk. That's yeah. the that's the big one. And once again, never, never, never. If you can, if you can at all costs avoid the light coconut milk, you're just buying a can of water that has a little bit of coconut essence in it. The heavy coconut milk is where it's at. If, if it's a dietary thing, by all means, don't be like Montana Max said and then have a reaction. Uh, but okay. <laughs> food, food safety first, right, kids? There we go. That looks really good. Isn't that pretty, though? Mm -hmm. Let's throw that back up on the big screen here. And that's at room temperature. It's going to take a minute to warm up because we want it to slightly reduce down as well. Yeah, look at that. I see it bubbling. There we go. Quick bubble there. We're doing good. Bubbling. So we're not going to put a lid on this. Good. We're not going to put a lid on this. Uh, if you're marinating seafood, by the way, because uh, we're kind of, you know, infusing flavor with these shrimpies here uh, in the sauce as it cooks down and as it reduces here. Uh, but let me tell you this. If you're marinating seafood, right, you're doing a, like a lime marinade on a tropical shrimp type action or something like that. Seafood only needs to marinate for half hour to an hour tops, right? Like utmost tops. Very delicate, okay? Uh, don't do the overnight routine with seafood, especially if you're doing a citrus marinade. Why? Because citrus will actually break down the protein. And then the shrimp, if you do like an overnight with citrus in it, they will become mushy. You will yeah. have a very poor textural experience yeah. with your seafood yeah. if, you, uh, if you do that. We got a nice simmer good work in there. Watch, watch your stove temp. Uh, we've got that. We don't want to boil. We just want a nice simmer uh, to evaporate out. Keep them moving a little bit. They are looking really good, and they're pretty much pretty close to being done. Quick mm, cook. Yummy. The other nice thing of cooking shrimp in a in a sauce with this liquid like this is it'll help keep some of that moisture uh, in the shrimp so they don't dry out. All right, we are getting real close here to all things awesome. Uh, like I said, our rice is done. Our I think rice we may done. have a couple new people popping in. Yeah, welcome to Montana Max Barbecue TV on Kitch.com, the food network for a new generation. <laughs> right? 
uh, is we are making tropical shrimp. Thank you for joining us here tonight. I hope you hit that follow button because we've got all sorts of awesome content coming your way. And you, if you arrived just now, you're in for a treat because we are moments away here from getting our stuff together and getting ready to plate. Let's go ahead and take that camera back in the corner now uh, to the overhead. And we've got a little bit of beautiful cilantro left here that I'm going to finish. Let's give you the up close and personal view. If you just joined us, you may not know. We've got a multitude of different cameras rocking here to give you every perspective that we possibly can. And let's go ahead and rough chop this down. Now, we're going to use a little sprinkle of this uh, to actually go in our rice, which we made before the show started. So that's ready to go. Using chicken stock, of course, to get that extra flavor. That's pretty good, man. And this is some decent cilantro. We typically grow our own produce uh, in an indoor hydroponic garden system, which we'll be unveiling on yes. the show in the near future here. So exciting. Uh, but uh, for store-bought cilantro? That is pretty good. It's pretty yeah. good, especially for this time of year. I'm digging it. All right. The other thing that we're going to do, we're going to get some fresh, fresh lime. We added lime to our sauce, but it's tropical shrimp, so we can always get a little bit more lime action rocking and rolling here. I'm just going to make sure, keeping an eye on my shrimp back here. They are they are getting very tropical in that tropical hot tub of flavor that I've got going on there. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to add one of my secret competition tips. There is Kansas City Jen on the chef's table. Don't be afraid. Join her. Say hi. We love to meet people. Food brings us together. All right. We're going to use a grater here uh, to get some zest. Okay, we're going to finish this dish with the essence of that beautiful lime zest, all right? What we're doing is creating beautiful aromatics, and we do this right before we plate because we you can do it early, but I'm telling you, if you do this right before you plate and those aromatics are coming up when we serve this dish, you're already creating that expectation of awesome, right? Because we are using so many of our senses long before it ever hits our taste buds, right? And of course, of course, of course, in your zesting, you want to not get uh, the white part right there. You can see there a little bit. We're just the edge of that. But once you start getting the white part of the lime, you run the risk of getting that bitter flavor, all right? The rind of lemon, lime, when we use zest, that can be very bitter. And we don't need a ton of it. I'm already getting the aromatics coming off the cutting board here. It's absolutely phenomenal. I think zest is underrated. Zest is underrated. It doesn't even take that long to do it, and it will make your dish like so much more like fresh tasting. They make fun of me in the competition where they're like, "Oh, you're gonna add lemon zest? They're gonna add lime zest? Oh, <laughs> zest guy?" Because uh, I talk about, I I really go into detail. If you want to take my pro level classes on Barbecue Champs Academy, we go into like excessive detail about all these different components and building and layering and presentation and all kinds of different stuff uh, on Barbecue Champs Academy, which you can find through our website. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm kind of known, I'm kind of known for that. And then they're like, you know, oh, guess what? Lime says, I'm like, yeah. And then we walk back with the trophy and we're like, Lime says, oh, pretty funny, huh? <laughs> Laughing all the way to the bank. All right. We got this. Oh, wow. The, the, speaking of aromatics, this sauce. I can smell it. Yeah, it's fragrant. It's vibrant. It's smell fresh. Vision. Once again, if you're just joining us, so seven ingredients in the sauce. We've got sriracha, mm -hmm. a little like a half tablespoon of sriracha, half tablespoon of soy, half tablespoon of fresh ginger root. We've got a handful of cilantro, not a ton of it. Coconut milk is the base. We're using a jalapeno infused honey. Uh, to give it a little bit of that spice uh, element Hot to honey. it with the sriracha and a little of that uh, southern Mexican flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, so I guess we're, we got kind of a tropical fusion. Mexican tropics, mm -hmm. Asian tropics coming together. Uh, all work together, throwing those ingredients in the blender. It's so easy. And now we're cooking our shrimp down in that sauce, and we're about ready to go here. Uh, those shrimp are done. They are looking good. We've got uh, cilantro. Let's go ahead and grab a trivet out just for safety measure here. And we can start building. Let's start building. We built this shrimp. We built this shrimp in a bowl. <laughs> All right. So we got a beautiful colored bowl there. Uh, we're going to be using, I've got my trivet. We've got our cilantro. 
let's go ahead and grab our rice, which we made here. This is actually a very healthy meal. Yeah. We're going to be doing a couple other meals coming up uh, tomorrow and Saturday and Sunday. If you're a football fan like we are, we're going to have, we're going to go through uh, one of our awesome wing recipes. Mm -hmm. That's tomorrow, right? Game day wings. Yes. And then the Chiefs play Sunday. So mm -hmm. we're going to show you quick, easy, one of our most requested appetizers. That's perfect for any party, really, but Addictive. always a hit on game day. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to be doing that because we got to stretch Sunday. out and yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get the jerseys on and all that stuff. But we're going to be doing a, a lot of kitchen recipes this month. So. Yeah. So make sure you hit that follow button and click that save my seat so you never miss a delicious moment. Yeah. And it'll just send you a reminder to your email. And um, yeah. How cool is that? Right. Don't forget. Life, life happens for all of us. Yeah. Right. So it's very easy. We all got things going on. Is we, and that rice looks really nice too. Look at that in the bottom. Let, let me flip it over to the overhead here. We made this rice before the show, and you can see the bottom there. I just added a little a knob of butter after it was done cooking, stirred it in there, mm -hmm. uh, and fluffed it up really nicely. And we've got nothing stuck there. Absolutely perfect. Nice, light, fluffy. Cooked in chicken broth. In chicken broth to add flavor. Now I messed this up though because I I forgot what I said I was going to do. So we're just oh, What are you doing? I'm going to add this, the rest of our cilantro oh. into the rice, which I talked about. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah, do this. Yeah, and then yeah. I'm doing this. And then you. <laughs> and then I was like, let's start putting rice in a bowl. Okay. All I right. like that. That's better. The there we go. Nice, simple, easy way to spruce up your rice. Well, we want to think here, we're building layers of flavor, but we're also building layers of texture and temperature and all these things to make it, a, even though it's a simple recipe, uh, it doesn't have to taste simple, right? Mm -hmm. So small things like adding just a little of that fresh cilantro into our rice at the very end, right before we serve, not only does it make it look pretty and a little, it's that extra, right? The kids talk about, you got the extra, we got the <laughs> extra right there. So we got a little uh, beautiful extra flair. You know, you if a little you don't extra like flavor. cilantro, you could, uh, you could add chives. Yeah. A little bit green onion, something like that. A little prefer. color goes a long way, right? Mm -hmm. Now, here we go. Ooh. Look at the beautiful color on that sauce. That looks great. It's reduced down a fair amount, and we can use that. We're going to use that uh, sauce to help flavor up our rice here, mm -hmm. too. So you don't want it to reduce too much and become. Uh, like maple syrup, which reductions can do if you over reduce them, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to use this to add some extra awesome flavor into that rice as well. So I'm going to get out a, a spoon. Let's go ahead and use this one. Look at those beautiful color cooked all the way through. Let's go ahead and just lay them right on top. Very hot. Watch your fingers. It's almost, uh, it's not a curry, but reminiscent of serving like a green curry almost, right? With that extra liquid that we're going to go ahead and let that rice soak in there. Mm -hmm. Let's get let's get a nice spoonful of that. Oh, it just smells wonderful. And we're going to go ahead, pour that right over the top, get those shrimp glistening. Ooh, great. just a little bit more. Just a little bit. Mm. Just a little bit. S H R I M P. Find out what it means to me. Right? And then we come back. Just a little bit of that beautiful. Oh. The zest. The zest. The zest. Don't forget. I didn't forget the zest. There we go, kids. Ooh, yes. Of Tropical course. shrimp right there. A that fusion of Mexican and. Oh, Aww. somebody's digging it. That's good. Uh, <laughs> a fusion of Mexican and Asian tropics. That's a little dark on that side, much better on this one. Thank you so much for those rounds of applause. And thank you so much for joining us. But now, right, here comes the real challenge. Kansas City, Jen, are you ready for the oh, taste? Oh, yes. Yes, please. I will tell you this. She does not have a poker face. So if I messed it up, She'll be like, it's really great. <laughs> you'll know. You didn't mess up you'll know. Oh, this looks smell. Beautiful. 
Yeah. I do smell. I've been smelling it. Yeah. <laughs> I've been, mmm. And the sauce looks just right. I, am I going to burn my mouth? It'll be warm, so okay. you shouldn't be too horrible. Mmm. It smells good. Mmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. very good. Mm. Mm. Shrimp is perfect. Mm. Not tough at all. Just perfect. But it should have shrimp. body to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it should have body. Mm. Uh, you should get a little bit of a mouthfeel with a bite through. Uh, it shouldn't be mushy, right? And that lime zest right on the top. Perfect. That's your introduction, right? Bite. That's your introduction when you're serving your your better half or mm. friends or family or kids. You're get, get that extra touch gives them that that this mm. is going to be great. Okay, you great. have to try it. All right, let's give it a little little, mm -hmm. little max snack here. Oh my gosh, that's delicious. Mm -hmm. What a great simple meal! I love it. You did good. You did great. <laughs> Thank you. And you can do it too. Seven ingredients. I I guess I I would take that. <laughs> I would bet money if you went to your fridge right now, you'd have at least half the ingredients in the sauce uh ready to go. Oh yeah. You know stuff you probably have in your pantry, except for maybe coconut milk. Maybe yeah, you don't have that. Right. Uh but easy. super easy, but so flavorful. Who mm -hmm. would think with such a simple recipe, you'd have so much flavor? Mm -hmm. Once again, we use the letter buck seasoning from the Montana Max barbecue line of sauces and seasonings. Flavors for every meal to season our shrimp tonight. Mm. Uh, and that's available on our website as well as all of our social media and everything, which is right below the video here. We invite you to connect with us on all of our platforms, uh, as we have different content everywhere, and we love to make cooking fun and we love to connect with all y'all. So thank you so much on behalf of Kansas City Jen and myself, Montana Max, for spending a little bit of your Friday night here and working through our technical difficulties earlier. But we did it. We made it. We did it. We made it. The dogs have settled down. The food is ready. It's mm -hmm. time to enjoy. Time to and thank you for joining us here on Kitsch.com, the food network for a new generation. Show's coming up tomorrow and Sunday, and we hope to see you there. Yeah. As always, for those about to cook. We salute you. We sure do. Have a great night. And take care of one another. Good night.